some challenges, but you know, that's just, that's just regular life, man. So, yeah. but yeah, we've been good, man. Just, you know, trying to find the new groove. That's what's up, brother. All right, well, here we go. I think I got everything working, rocking and rolling. Ladies okay. and gentlemen, <laughs> welcome to another virtual episode. Uh, we will be FaceTiming one of my favorite comedian homies in the motherfucking world, in the galaxy. Uh, <laughs> represent Long Beach, California, LBC. Let me just give them the quick 30-second intro. So, so this gentleman, he is passed at the comedy store. He started off as a, as a door guy. This is like my paraphrase hood Wikipedia happening. All right, so he, he's, he's, a, he's a comedy store cat. Yo, you're going to hear his name in circles, man. You might hear, like, it might be like a Rogan episode. He might be talking to somebody, and they're like, yo, I love Jesus Trejo. And they're like, oh, yeah, absolutely, man. That motherfucker's hilarious. He's cool as fuck. He know how to roll a joint real good. He from the LBC. Uh, so, yo, man, great news. So you have an hour special dropping. Let them know the date. Yeah, man, May 29th, uh, 9 p.m. on Showtime. My first one hour special, and it's called Stay at Home Sun. Uh, I, I guess the title is, is timely. I didn't know this shit was going to happen, you know? Wow. <laughs> so, but, but, the, but the title, I mean, it, it's, uh, yeah, it, 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 it kind of works at the moment. But, yeah, stay-at-home son, meaning, you know, I'm a stay-at-home son. I, I, I live with my parents, never moved out, taking care of them. Here we are, baby. <laughs> That's what's up, man. Um, my boy Jesus Trejo. I first heard of uh, Jesus Trejo from my homie, Javi Luna. Uh, who, who mentioned Trejo oh, and yeah, yeah, man. He, he's the one that put me on game and I remember calling you up and I was like super new to stand up and just being like, yo man, um, you know, I heard you're funny. I want to pick your brain. Like we got to link up and, um, uh, and yeah, the, the first gig we did together, you know, thankfully you were free. Uh, we had you roll with us to like Fresno, California. Where else do you remember? It was San Jose. San Jose, and then we went to like Fresno, right? Yeah, yeah, Fresno, and then we went to uh, uh, Visalia. Was it? Man, you know what? I, I can't even remember, but I just, yeah. I just remember being like a rookie, you know, trans transitioning from like a up and down underground internet rap mixtape type of career. And uh, getting into comedy and uh, just, like, you know, seeing you work, seeing, like, the different worlds that you operate in. That, that's one of the things that's very uh, interesting uh, to me about your, your story and everything you have going is, um, you know, I really learned a lot from you, dog. Like, you know, the way you approach yeah. the game, uh, the way you make your moves, you know. Uh, I see, I'll put it to you like this. I've seen Jesus Trejo. Uh, running a chessboard on about four or five homeless dudes off the beach in uh, San Diego. <laughs> He's getting lunch money. That's all. Some some California burrito money. That's all. <laughs> Man, he he was he was he had the the chessboard going, and you just see Trejo like just with like a beanie, maybe like a cut off cut off I denim. Have the picture you signed. I'm a huge fan, even like from like. High school, man. I, I remember I, I, I would cop the mixtapes. I would I would listen to it on MySpace, the 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 Candid Portis all. And I think I told you this when we started working together. It worked out that we were able to work together. Like I remember being so damn excited because it's like it's so crazy. I, I did a project because I, I went to Cal State Dominguez Hills and I had a I was a marketing major. But one of uh, the projects that I did was a a project on, on niche markets and how you were able like. The way I, I, I proposed it was it's like it's a weird owl but specific to the to Latino Chicano culture. Latinx wasn't a word then, you know, so it was like Chicano culture. Yeah. And and how you were able to relate, you know, lingo uh, regionalisms and stuff like that. And uh, yeah, I'm 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 a huge fan. So when we started working together, man, that was like I mean, I, I look at you and it was such an inspiration because you I mean from the get go, you're a marketing genius from, you know, like the tamales, the the, the bobblehead, uh, yeah, you it, it, it's just like you you were a case study in marketing. <laughs> so when we were able to work together in this comedy thing, it was like it was so cool because I, I I got to learn a lot from you, and we we just went tit for tat. We would just exchange what we what we knew, and it was all love from the from the get go. So. 
Yo, so so uh, you're one hour. I could have swore you told me it was going to be a half hour. Did that change or did I miss here? No, no. Um, it was an hour. It was an hour special. Yeah, from the okay. get go. Uh, and, um, you know, we had been in talks about it. and It was like, yes, no. And then, uh, you know, we we had a meeting and it finally it finally happened. And um, I was uh, I was uh, supposed to do because I got it earlier. I, I, I got the deal for it earlier in the year, but. We, we ended up finalizing everything later in the year, so I filmed it uh, November 2nd of last year. Man, so I remember when you were preparing for that, you were, uh, quote-unquote, uh, running it, running the set. Um, well, I remember you when you did your TV appearance, it was a, uh, who, who was it, Fallon? Wh- which one did you do? Uh, 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 Late Late Show with James Corden. Yeah, the James Corden Show. I remember Mm -hmm. that one, you were, uh, like, running it. Like, you and a homie would go to, like, all the mics, all the stages, all the spots, or all the clubs, I guess, in in L.A., and we're working it. How did you prepare for an hour? I mean, I just kind of went through everything, and I just started, you know, I ditched that, I ditched this, I added this, and and there was a lot of jokes. And that's the thing, there was a lot of jokes that I wanted to put in, in, in the hour, and I didn't even get to it because it just didn't, you know, flow. You know, and and one of the things I did that, man, I I think I need to replicate it more is uh, I I went in and got a WeWork space Ah. and and, and I got it like the community, the community one out of because the other ones are pretty expensive. But the community one, it's like a Starbucks just with more outlets, you know, free coffee. They got the works. And so I went in there and and I would go in there and and write and and I treated it like a like like a job, like a nine to five. I would go in there early. Go in there. I knew they had coffee. Sometimes they had breakfast. I just go in there. I gave myself a, a thirty minute or hour lunch. Went back, and then by the time I was done, it was ready for me to go out and hit the clubs. And I did that for like four months leading up to the special. And um, I knew that in the evenings, like like sometimes I would have like late spots, like my midnight spots, and I didn't have anything in between. So I would able I was able to use the 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 meeting rooms and they have whiteboards and stuff and i go in there and before every weekend that i would go on the road i just go up there and just write the whole thing and, and bullet points and um uh, just see what works what didn't work you know the following week i go back in there and kind of uh consolidate all the all the all the notes that i had it's like oh this didn't work all weekend uh this worked so let's you know wipe that so i have these pictures of, of me like laying out the whole set on, on, on the thing and it, and it helped a lot man so, so when you got the WeWork space, did you have access like 24 hours or what time did they close? Yeah, it's 24 hours. So sometimes I was in there later. Like I, 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 I would invite homies to go in there and we, I, I just kind of run the set by them, you know, see what it was like. Uh, yeah. I, you know, they gave me tags or, or, or they would just give me like an opinion. Like, I don't know if this goes right here, bro. Like, you know, so I broke it down in thirds and, you know, I don't know if this is the right way, but this is the approach that I took. And, you know, we'll see what the response is. But mm-hmm. I, I feel cool knowing that I broke it down in thirds. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like I had to set it up. My goal was to do like a five minute bit up top just to like a like like something I, I wanted to do. And then from there, go to an introduction. So the first 20 minutes is, hey, you know, uh, let me introduce myself. Jesus Trejo from Long Beach, California. And then the middle was kind of like get to know me a little more and then the parents so everything was like it, it was a three act play you know mm-hmm. in my head it, it plays like a three act play so this is who i am i set up my variables my parents uh myself i'm scared of this and that and everything comes together in, in a 20 minute story at the end so oh man i, I can't wait i can't wait to see it um, yeah, watch people see it's like it's garbage what is he talking about <laughs> oh no no uh, uh, there's no way man because like what I was saying earlier about how Trejo like uh, I'm speaking to you like they're like like you're not here but the way you um, really have navigated your career man um, you just oh hello thank you thank you look at this man we get refreshments at, uh, on the what did he say oh that's right so there. cool in my vieja so, oh, oh, was that so? Tell her I said hi. Yeah, she she was like, I mean, we were talking just before. She's like, man, anytime people bring up Trejo's name, they're always like, man, this dude's, you know, of course, super funny, right? That that's a big part of it. Was like, the dude's super chill. He's cool, man. He's so nice, and that's almost like one of your like secret weapons. <laughs> it's like 
you have just really good energy. You're really positive. <laughs> I never see you just like throwing a pity party or being like a pain in the ass to be around or anything like that. But um, I, what what I was saying is um, I'm looking forward to seeing the hour because even just in the few years that I've known you, it's like, man, you are you are a hustling ass motherfucker. Because I look up one day and it's like, oh, he, he's got a he's got a show cracking with uh, First We Feast. And he's on there with all his comedy store buddies. He's got Joey Diaz, Brendan Schaub, and uh, uh, what's the name? Um, Tom and his wife Christina, and they're at the at Tacos 1986, and yeah, and like how you just you hold it down as like uh, almost like a bridge between communities, almost like a liaison of like. Um, I'll give you an example. Have you seen L.A. Originals on Netflix? Of, of course, yeah, big fan of uh, Mr. Yes. Cartoon and Esteban. So, so for example, the way in the documentary it shows how they were able to like kick it with different walks of life, different levels of society. They they fucking around with some Hollywood shit. Like you might be at an AARP uh, film documentary uh, red carpet thing, and then the next day, you know, you're in, in some like little nightclub, you know, or you might be in New York <laughs> doing some shit, or you're like running hills with Brendan Schaub, you know. Uh, so yeah, I, I just really get a kick out of like, yo, Trejo's like really patient. He's you know he's he's focused, uh, he's determined. Um, because sometimes I have the flaw the flaw of like, like almost like being impatient to where it's like, well, if I want a show on you know such and such network, we're gonna have to like get with the showrunner. Then we got we gonna have to sign on with an agent, and then there's a bunch of back and forth, a lot of paperwork, and then conference calls, and then people chime in and they fuck it up. Now the idea is different. Next thing you know, I'm doing some corny ass shit. It's a lot of work. It ain't it ain't even paying as good as I thought it was gonna pay. And and I talk myself out of it. Does that make sense? Totally. And I, and I think <laughs> we're all guilty of it because because we it, we in our head, I, I think as artists. Uh, we have a sense of urgency, you know, and we want things to happen on a certain clock and a certain time frame. And it's like, you know, we made a decision, you know, it's like, like, you know, you made a decision earlier than I did, you know, uh, you, you were already hustling, like me in high school, looking at you, you made the decision that art was going to be your life, wow. entertainment, you know, it's like whatever it was, and you've been able to adapt and change with the current See, See now, you know, things have changed with this Corona thing. You know, comedy clubs aren't really a thing. So it's another, not a obstacle, but another opportunity to adapt. What does this new layout look like? So, you know, for for me, I'm, 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 I'm the same way. It's like, oh, this is going to take that and that. And a while ago, I was just like, hey, man, I'm just going to cook, cook, cook. And some of these things might burn, you know, because you got so many pots going and, and skillets going. And so, some of this stuff might burn. Some of it is like, we don't want to. You don't want to dabble in it, but, you know, it's like this year I think was pretty exciting because I was, there were a couple things. It was a, it was a special that I had done. You know, I was working on, on that. I'm, I'm, I'm working on new jokes, obviously, because once the special comes out, I don't want to be stuck without. Uh, the First We Feast project was phenomenal. The First We Feast people have been so sweet and kind and encouraging. And then also I had like another show, like a, a, a show idea, uh, uh, playing golf, tea time. What Jesus said, you know, some episodes did better than the others, but it's like, you know, and 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 I have to stop myself from reading the comments because some people are like, man, this is wack, this is terrible. It's like, hey, that's for y'all to do, man. It's like my job is to create, and if y'all like it, great. If not, you know what? It's like, whatever, you know. So yeah, I don't, I don't know. It's the you know, poco a poquito, and eventually those those trees you keep watering, and eventually they give fruits. So yeah, yeah. So so you sowed. You've sown a lot of seeds throughout the years, um, mm -hmm. and uh, you know your talent set. Your you, I've, I haven't witnessed all of them, of course, but like, I just know for a fact that you you purposely put yourself in like difficult situations, uh, comedy wise. Like you, you're fearless up there, um, but but at the same time, you it is maestro way. So you you command it with like it looks effortless. So like the skill is hidden. Like people. When they see you at the Houston Improv, you know, uh, 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 going through the bits and leaning on the wall and engaging people and, and replying quickly to a, a heckler and, and uh, already thinking about check drop and so on and so forth, they might not know, like, yo, this dude's just putting so much work behind the scenes 
that he looks so relaxed up there. You know, he's leaning on the wall. He's, you know, he might sc- scratch his neck. Like, it's just second nature. Everything is just, you know, like you. So what you said about the WeWorks experiment, you're basically yeah. saying that, like, you were going to make sure you knew your shit inside out, basically. Yeah. And and as a, as a matter of fact, uh, as you're saying the inside out, I, I just remembered something. During that time, there was an opportunity to go to Mexico and, and do my set because I, I translated the whole hour into Spanish. And that was like on, on, a, on a day just to kind of like mix it up. Uh, that was my break that I gave myself. I'm like, let's just do it in Spanish. There's no rush on this. But luckily, I was so happy I even started doing that because they were like, hey, do you want to go to Mexico? And, uh, you know, my agent was like, do you want to go to Mexico and, and run the show in Spanish? I said, I'm ready. Yeah. So I, that was luck, bro. So I go to Mexico and it's like to know it inside out. I, I knew it so much inside out that I knew it in like in another angle. It was a still like like that Drake line. It was the same building, just different view. You know, it was a different view on the same like, you know, it came from the same place. And um, but yeah, the we work, I, I, I think. You know, in any co-working space, because I don't know about you, but it's hard for me to work at home. You know, I got my folks here and it's like, you know, I, I try to kind of set up and make make, make my space a, a, like a, it is an office and, you know, I shoot stuff here and, you know, but it, it's also very difficult. I mean, I do it here now, but the we like something about a co-working space when you can walk into the lobby and you see people drinking coffee or whatever it is and they're exchanging ideas. It's, it's almost like what I imagine college life was supposed to be that you walk into a commons area or people laying in the grass and they're talking about, you know, they're so deep into their major that they're just talking about it, you know? And, and that's what it is there. Like I, I was talking to some lady who started a, a vintage clothing brand, right? And she would go to Goodwill, bring, bring stuff back to her office. She had a private office and she would take apart stuff and get the molds out of that. And this woman is brilliant. Really, uh, there was a music producer there. Uh, there was a VR guy. It was four people in there, and they were making a killing. Um, so, it's like, sometimes it, it's like you I, – I, I just feel inspired when I tap into different circles and, and and get inspired because you can't keep getting inspired from the same well that everyone else is, you know. Mm-hmm. I've read that somewhere. That it's like if you keep getting inspired by the same well that everyone else is in your field, it's like it starts to sound the same. Mm-hmm. So, is there a book you would recommend, man? Just or a book or two that you can, um, because I I know you be reading like like I be reading. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bro. Actually, I have this one. I I read one one of the uh, uh, case studies in here, but this is a whole series of books, bro. You got it, bro. These things are great. Which one is it? Uh, this one's called "On Managing Yourself," uh, but it's a Harbor uh, Business Review uh, reads. So, so, so this one is just like a, a, a cluster of, of, of articles that kind of just, you know, on managing yourself. And the reason I got it was, uh, manage your energy, not your time. I'm like, Oh, that's another angle. Like usually like, man, I don't have enough time. Everybody's like, sometimes it's not even time. It's like energy, especially in, in, like right now with this COVID thing. It's like, it's your energy, bro. Protect it. Can you, can yeah. you hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yo, I want I want to chime in about that real, real quick. Um, there's this dude that I listen to. His name's Scott Adams. He has a podcast. He yeah. he one in one of his books. He literally he mentioned it today. He said that um, the way he has his little like live stream uh, his office rigged. He says I have an iPad on a stand eye level. He says um, I, I have a Siri command that basically turns on the the ring lights, the two ring lights. And it closes his curtains, and he basically says, "I don't have an engineer. I've experimented with fancy cameras and and uh, microphones and everything." He said, "But the metric, oh, fuck, is that you, brother? Who's calling me? Is that you calling me? No, that's not me. Okay, my bad, bro. That must be FaceTime. What is happening? Oh my God, it's so annoying." Jeez. Good, yeah, good. speak speaking of energy, you see how that could fr- whenever you know when you frustrate with tech, uh it, it fucks up your energy. Hold on a second. Jesus Christ, why is this on? 
It's still C, though. Okay, fa- sorry. FaceTime was trying to hijack my shit. Anyway, what I was saying is, is the metric that he follows and measures is his energy level. So, for example, he says, my quality could be better, right? If I got this camera and an engineer and an in-house producer and this and that. He's like, sure, the fidelity of the microphone might be different. He's like, but in terms of me being an introvert, me wanting to do this at 7 a.m., you know, me preserving my energy and not having to fuck with people so that my broadcast is a clear, like, simple, uh, full of energy version of me. He's like, I have to measure that metric. And it was such a good example, man. Like, like for example, um, I don't know. I guess I just, I, I'm learning how to, like what you were saying, man, how to manage yourself. Because ultimately, that's what it is, man. You have to manage what stories you're telling yourself. What stories are you le- are you letting define yourself? Uh, you still there, brother? Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm here. Okay, my bad. I'm watching you through this other thing. Um, okay. l- like, um... That's true. Just managing your emotions, managing your anger. Um, yeah, because it's like what, like like my homie told me this the other day. Because it's like it was a challenging situation that I that that kind of came up unexpectedly. I was a little frustrated, but he's like, "What is normal, man?" It's like we all have things that we juggle. It's like the things that that Chingo juggles as a performer, as a as as a father, as a you know, it's like. There's so many things that we juggle, but it, it, it's like, what are we looking for? You know, it's like you just, you know, you have these things, you find out what the what the sweet spot is, and you just execute. You know what I mean? It's like, I don't, like I almost don't know how to like put it into words, but it's just managing energy. But that's true. You know, it's like, as you as you were saying this about the, uh, remind me the name of the guy from the podcast. Oh, Scott Adams. Scott Adams. It it, it, it kind of reminded me of. Uh, I hope I'm saying his name right. Uh, Andrew Schultz, the guy who created uh, Snoopy uh, cartoon, the cartoon strip, right? Uh, he 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 got rejected so many times that people were like, "Like your drawings are whack," and then, and then he's like, "But my story's good." It's like I've, I, yeah, I you know, there's guys who draw better than me, but it's like, it's like the story is like I, I focus my energy on the story and what I want to say and that will carry you further than amazing art pieces but with whack storyline. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and and you know what man? That reminds me of a thing called a, a talent stack. Meaning mm. meaning like Homeboy wasn't the best artist but he had the characters and the storylines. So for example, if you look at um, let's just say like a, yourself or a comedian or something, it's like okay, well he knows how to host you know, he's familiar with these other aspects of life. You know what I'm saying? And you put that together and it might be like, well, he might not be he might not be the best at X, Y, or Z. But sure. he knows he knows a lot about A, B, and C and he's done F and G before and he's kinda decent at J. You know what I mean? And you you put it together as a stack. Like me, for instance. It's like he's not the best comedian, he's not the best rapper, he's not the best marketer, he's not the best uh, influencer, none of that shit. Uh but it's some other little things that when you put it together, like what you were saying, it's like, oh, there's nuance and there's niche and then there's, you know, there's, you know, references to this and a little bit of knowledge of that and just good enough at this to where if you put it all together. <laughs> yeah, well, it, it's like, I, I, I think, yeah, it's like going on, with, like, with the example of, of the stack, I, I feel like we're all like video game characters. You know, it's like when you pick one, it's like, you, you look at a different character and it's like agility is high, power is low, blah, blah. It's like, it's a different assortment and, and you know, different people have different strengths and different weaknesses, but it's not to say that this one is better than, yeah. it's, it's, it's not to say that, I, I don't know, Mortal Kombat reference, Scorpion is better than Sub-Zero under, circum, uh, under certain circumstances, you know? Um, Pokemon even taught you, like taught kids that it's like this this fire Pokemon doesn't work well with with the water uh, of Pokemon. It's like so our energies are like tools, you know. They're 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 great for this. They're not so great for that. It can hold its own here, but it's it, it just assessing, you know, what are my strengths, what are my weaknesses, and playing to it. Yeah, like uh, emotional intelligence, and you know, or yeah. e- or even like hey. You might see some motherfuckers and it's like, man, this dude's a fucking killer at crowd work, you know? And it's like, yeah, but this other dude's storytelling or this dude's so animated or like, 
Or how does this motherfucker just sit on a stool and command so much attention? Like, he doesn't move. Like, what the fuck? Right. And it's like, well, you... Doesn't mean you do that. Doesn't mean it's going to work for you. <laughs> yeah, and it's like maybe... Like, certain things, like, you know, certain weaknesses, it just plays to his strength. Like, with Mitch Hedberg, you know, he was... From what I understand, uh, the things that I've read, that he was so scared of being in front of an audience. He would, like... He would shake and and that he performed one time with his back to the audience. People were like, man, that was genius. It's like he was playing to maybe like a like like a weakness that he has, and he turned it into something so great. Him looking down on on one of his Tonight Show appearances, you can see how much his hand shakes, you know. And he's like terrified. I even read this. I don't know this to be true, but that he painted the inside of his glasses so he wouldn't see the audience. And he has his hair down and he's performing. It's like to us, it's like. That was Mitch Hedberg. It's like, there is no Mitch Hedberg without those things. But and people say, play to your strengths. It's like, sometimes play to your weaknesses and it, it becomes something great, you know? And yeah. I'm sure there was people like, hey, you can't do that. It doesn't work. It's like, it worked for him, man. Yeah. Yeah, especially in comedy, man. It's like, you know, vulnerabilities, you know, being vulnerable. Are you willing to be the butt of the joke? You know, are you being honest? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, all those things. So, uh, man, what, what can you just tell us um, some of your favorite, like, comedy store stories? Or may, I, I know I've heard the one that, that how you got past and or, or whatever you want to tell us, man. And comedy store, I mean, there's so many, there's so many uh, great stories to be had there. Um, I mean, I, I, I can, uh, you know, me, me being a door guy there and just working as, you know, parking cars, just that in itself, it's like, was so was so crazy because I got to meet so many people. I I, I remember, uh, I, I yeah. I, I mean, I don't even know where to where to begin. Um, I, I I could tell you one time I I got banned. I got banned from the comedy store because I, I I drew a a, a a penis. I don't know if you could cuss or, or yeah yeah or, yeah. He drew okay. a dick. What so, did you draw a dick on? Yeah, yeah. So I drew a dick on the on, on the manager's car. It was an assistant GM there at the time, and it was just me being an idiot. You know, like every kid has done that. You know, when a car is like dirty, and you go and you put, wash me. It's technically vandalizing, but it's like, oh, wash away, no big deal. So this this manager who, at the time, was kind of you know busting my chops a little bit. So I thought it was funny to go over there. He had a T bird, like not the old school, but the latest version of the T bird that came out, right? And it was all dusty. It was a black car. And so I thought it would be hilarious if I drew a big old piece on the hood of the car. <laughs> so I drew this immaculate piece. I mean, from from corner to corner, uh, eyes, hat, legs, whiskers, veins. Whis- whiskers. I mean, attention to detail, you know. A, a, cu- and, uh, a couple of little pee drops shooting out. <laughs> Oh, I actually didn't do the P drops. That that's an interesting part of that story. So my homie was like, "What are you doing? This is like you're gonna get in trouble." So he goes and draws drip, drip, two, 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 two little drips coming out of it, right? Little P drops, whatever it was. So he pulls out, he leaves, he comes out, uh, he comes back, and he's like, "Hey man, why did you touch my car?" And I'm like, "Oh, you saw that?" And he's like, "Yeah, man, it didn't come out." I'm like, "What are you talking about?" So we go outside, and because it was so much, like, dust in there, and it's a black car, so I, I guess, like, I use this part of the finger. It's not like I use my nail, but I guess it scratched it, like like a loose sandpaper of sorts. You, your, your, your fingertip? Yeah, my fingertip, like this, scratched it because it was so dirty. He hadn't washed it in so long. So... So we go out there, he's like, look, and, and we kind of do, like, the angle. See? So there's a holographic piece on his hood he's like are you kidding me right now i'm like damn man I'm like i'm 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 really sorry i have no money to my name I'm, I'm i'm working the door it's minimum wage you know it's like all that money is accounted for i got you know stuff to pay and uh, um I, I tell him i said you know what i will pay you for this i'll own up to it yes i i, I drew it uh but let me give you payments you know i'll give you 20 bucks a week until i pay off the hundred dollar because he had detailed it right I said, as a matter of fact, go do it again, you know, make it 200 and I'll, I'll pay you 20 bucks a week. No big deal. My bad. 
So he goes and get it detailed. It's not coming out, bro. Wow. It, it's less, but it, you can still see that piece. So I get banned, bro. I get banned. Uh, my name wasn't up on the wall yet. I've been passed, but it wasn't up on the wall yet. And they threatened to not have it go up there. Now I'm crying, bro. Now, now, now they're hitting deep, you know? Wow. I'm crying. I'm like shaking. I'm like, man, this is everything I've worked for. And um, yeah, I, I, I was upset. And, and then at, at the time there was like, I understand there was a conversation had because I was on the road with Polly at the time. And they, they, they reached out to Polly and they're like, hey man, this kid's a man. He's, you know, vandalizing stuff and blah, blah. It's like, and it was at the end of when he was uh, promoting the uh, politics special, you know, the political and comedy special that he did. And I had, I had been on the road with him through him creating that. And then once it came out and then like promoting it till the end of the year. And so now I'm not really working at the store. So I don't have money coming in. Yeah, I don't, I don't really have money coming in. Uh, now they're going to drop me from the tour. I'm like, this is a mess. Wow. Like, this, this is bad. And then Polly decides to be like, hey, you know what? Just come on the road with me. Um, it's fine. Just, you know. So on that plane ride, he gives me a talk. Like He, he, he gives me like a real stern talk. He's like, hey, man, you got to stop doing that. You know, you, you, you prank too much. People don't like it. It's like, you know, you're annoying. You're, you're a kid right now. You're doing stuff like that. That's annoying. He's like, I got into stuff like that. And let me tell you, once you get tagged with, you're the annoying person to work with on, on set, no one's going to fuck with you. He's like, you don't have a career to fuck up right now. He's like, just listen to me. you got to stop doing this. Now, I would prank a lot. I, I thought that was hysterical. In the, in the, as, as someone who grew up in the age of jackass, I'm like, oh, this is funny. You know, <laughs> It's not. It's annoying. So, you know, I took the lesson and I forget where we were. Uh, wait, uh, like Boise, actually, we were in Boise and we we're going to go to radio and I love, love, love going to radio. Like, I, I think it's so cool. Like going to radio, me, the DJs, I don't know what it is about an old radio station or even like a, like a popping one. It, it's just fascinating to me. Yeah. So I'm, I'm right and early. I'm ready outside of the hotel. They got the sliding doors and they're glass, but they got that morning sweat. So I'm waiting for Polly. He's running late. The car is waiting for us. So I start drawing, you know, nothing bad. Just like a little dog, a house, a little fence. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm drawing the whole scene. You know, and I hear breathing behind me. What's that? You're like, you know, being an only child. Yeah, being an only child, you know. And then I hear like, <sighs> I hear like the behind me, like breathing on. And I look, I'm like, oh, hey, Polly, what's up? He just looks at me just like with the half closed eyes. Like, what are you doing right now? What did I say about drawing? I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, oh no, you just had this conversation with me on the like on the flight. What I say about drawing? And, and I'm like, damn, my bad, bro. He's like, you don't like, you're hard headed. You don't learn, huh? I'm like, my bad. Don't touch and, nothing. Well, yeah, I didn't get to go to radio. He was so pissed. He's like, what are you doing? He's like, just hang back, man. So it's like, to to, to me, it was like, I can't trust you to keep to yourself or behave at the radio station. You're going to get me in trouble. Wow. And uh, I, I just would kept doing stuff like that. And, and it kept happening until I, I learned my lesson big time. We're in, we're in Cincinnati. Coming back from radio, uh, he had to go uh, take a number two, right? So he's his, his stomach's hurting. And we're in the car. We get into the hotel. He's staying at the, like the top floor, whatever it was, like floor, let's just say 25, whatever it was. It was a big building, right? And I was staying on like floor two, mm -hmm. and uh, so, so so we get there. He's like limping. He's not gonna make it to the to his room kind of thing. He's like, I'm not gonna make it. I'm howling, laughing, and uh, the assistant was there. He was laughing too. And then we get in the elevator, and then I get to floor number two. I'm like, All right, man, good luck. Uh, good luck to you. And I grab all the buttons on the elevator. And go. Oh. I get off, and the doors are closed. And he's shaking his head, grabbing his stomach. He's like, You fucked up, bro. I'm like, oh, shit, what did I just do? Like, I did shit without even thinking about it. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, he gave me a stern a, a stern talking to, but, you know, I get where he was coming from, and, yeah, I was I was an idiot. So it's like this thing that started at the store just ran, and I learned one of my biggest lessons, like, stop doing stupid shit. Man, that's hilarious. And uh, I'll tell you what, man, um, shit, if you ever need uh, somebody going on the road with you, 
uh, <laughs> you need a prankster. You know, right now I'm laid off, you know, but some people say I'm funny. Yeah, hell yeah, let's, let's do it, man. I'd love to go on the road with you, man. Hey, hey brother. Well, uh, I want to end it on that story. And, uh, you know, mainly because my Zoom account is the free one. So it's, they only give you 40, 40 minutes. <laughs> oh, totally, man. Hey, thank you so much for having me. I, I hope we can work together again. Say hi to the family. And again, thank you so much for all the support and the love, man. I always appreciate it. My brother, my brother. So one more time, tell him the date and uh, the special. It's an hour long. It's on Showtime. It is called Stay at Home Sun. And what's the date? One more time. May 29th, 9 p.m. Check it out. Uh, yeah, uh, check it out. At Jesus Trejo is, is uh, Twitter. At Jesus Trejo, the number one is Instagram or JesusTrejo.com. And, uh, yeah, hopefully we'll we'll get live shows going again. Uh, yeah, but definitely follow him on Twitter because he got one of the best Twitter accounts. Like he, had, that's that's one of the things I noticed too, dog. Like like when I say, man, Trejos is on top of his shit. He's so fucking focused. <laughs> like he he does he has no time for any excess bullshit that doesn't contribute to his overall goal. Because even his Twitter, like me on Twitter, I'm arguing with fans over like politics and shit. Uh, <laughs> like I'm going, I'm I'm just like retweeting. I'm not doing anything. You're like actually writing tweets, like you write tweet jokes, and you're it's like a portfolio of your inner thoughts and jokes. And, a lot uh, of the jokes in the special started off as tweets, and I I, I want to do this thing where I like ex like I find the tweet and the date that I tweeted it, and uh, just kind of compare it to uh, to the joke. But yeah, like a dozen tweets uh, were are, you can see in the special, so. Wow, that, that's amazing, and uh, I think Steve Martin turned his into a book, and uh, oh, wow. your, yours are good enough to turn into something. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> it'll come with a uh, with with uh, dick art, like uh, foggy window dick art. That's gonna be the new uh, album cover, man. Yeah, uh, new special dick art. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Don't be a dick. <laughs> yeah. All right, my brother. Te cuidas. Un saludo to your to your folks and. Um, uh, man, just hang in there, brother. Hopefully just a couple more weeks, man, and we can start getting some normalcy. Yeah, yes, sir. Say hi to the fans. Take care. Talk soon. Quit it. Peace. Okay.